everybody and welcome. If you have played Kerbal Space Program 2 for some time, you might have encountered situations where a game-breaking bug ruins your mission and you cannot continue anymore. Today I'm going to show you how one of these horrible situations almost made me give up my epic Jewel 5 science mission, how I managed to get it back working and how you can do the same if you encounter this situation yourself. This here is my Jewel 5 main ship. I call it the JFS 5000. JFS stands for Jewel for Science and the 5000 was just a cool sounding number derived from the fact we are visiting five moons of the gas giant Jewel. Some of you may already know this vehicle and all the things it had to go through because you watched the live streams where I put it through the ringer. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss future streams and the final edit of the completed mission when I release it here. I am trying to break through 100,000 subscribers this year and your help would be massively appreciated. Ok, so what happened to this spaceship? First I need to explain how it is structured. After launching from Kerbin in one gigantic single launch, and yes, it was a single stage to orbit launch. The JFS 5000 consisted of the main vehicle and four landing vehicles designed to tackle Joule's five moons. A space plane for lathe, a lander with massive descent stage for Tylo, which was also designed to later land on the moons Val, Bob and Paul. And then there were two special landers with you dunk it science experiments on board. These can only be used when submerged into liquid, so I had to get creative, but more on that in a future video. What I want you to focus on is the main lander in the green color and the space plane. Both are designed to undock and redock a couple of times with the mothership. And here is where the game breaking bug struck. When I came back from Val, I docked my lander inside the cargo bay and suddenly my plane started drifting away. Curiously, it still kinda thought that it was connected to the rest of the vehicle, but there were many things wrong with it. I no longer had control input, it not just drifted away, it kinda jumped further and further and a few couple of other things that were suboptimal. Fortunately, I have saved often, so I was able to restore a situation where the undocking status of mothership and plane was still uncorrupted. Now I had two options. Replay a big chunk of my mission or open up the patient and work on its insides, manually editing the save files. Me being me, I of course chose the latter. My goal was to see if I could find meaningful differences in my vehicle inside the save game code between the working save and the corrupted one and maybe use this information to fix it. If you want to use this video as a kind of tutorial how you can rescue your own save states that have similar problems, here's what you're going to need. A capable text editor that offers to compare two files to each other. For me, this was Notepad++ with the Compare plugin installed. Luckily, KSP2 save games are stored in plain text as JSON files, but this also makes them huge. We're talking tens of thousands of lines. In my case, it was more than 83,000 lines. Actually, you can double that because I had to compare two save files, the one where things were working and one where the bug was present. First, you need to find your vehicle in that gigantic file. If you search for it, make sure you don't just use the vehicle's name, but search for this string. Assembly name JFS5000 in my case, but you need to include the quotation marks and colon. This assembly name is a bit further into the actual vehicle's object, so in my case it was line 16000, but the vehicle object already began at line 15981. 19 lines above that. What I did next was to copy the entire vehicle object from the save game that was still working and put it into a new file. Notepad++ allows me to collapse JSON objects so I could easily copy all 46,818 lines of Jewel 5 mothership code at once. Then I did the same thing with the corrupted save. Once that was done, I moved the corrupted ship object to the other view. Right click on the file tab in Notepad++ and choose move document to other view. Next I used the compare plugin. I am not going to explain how to install plugins in Notepad++ because it's fairly easy, you can google that or you might want to use a different editor. 
Once the compare plugin did its thing, we can see a couple of differences. Of course, the orbit numbers will differ, but that is to be expected and shouldn't worry us. There is a bunch of that in here. Even with the differences highlighted, it's still a lot to check. I knew the problem had something to do with docking, so I did another search. Part name, docking. Again with quotation marks and colon. This showed me all available docking ports on this vehicle. The ones that were causing the issue were Mark II inline ports. So docking port underscore 2V underscore M2 underscore inline underscore side port was what I had to look for. Just like the entire vehicle object, the part object starts a couple of lines above that name. So I cropped both Mark II docking port sections into new files for each safe, the still working one and the corrupted one. Once that was done, I ran the compare plugin again and then we got something interesting. Two sections per docking port that were just missing in the corrupted file. Now, I am neither a Unity developer, nor a KSP2 modder, nor even a software engineer, but I believe these sections tell the game which part the docking port is attached to. Because one of the problems in the corrupted state was that the docking ports no longer had an undock option available. Alright, so here is what I did. I just inserted the missing lines in the corresponding segments of the corrupted save file. What you need to be aware of is the attached part GUID. This is the unique identifier of the part your docking port is docked to. Every part in your save game has this type of ID. So here it starts with 8B and ends on FF. When we search for this, we can see that this is the ID of the other docking port. And correspondingly, the missing section contains the ID of the first docking port, starting with 49 and ending on DF. If you have more than one active docking connection with the same type of docking port, you need to make sure you pick the correct section. And of course, insert this code into the full save file, not just the extracted parts I used to find the problem. Make sure to put them into the correct position by matching the lines of code. Okay, so what was the result? <laughs> the result was that as soon as I loaded up the fixed save game, the space plane no longer drifted away when I docked the lander and both docking connections remained healthy with an available undock button. I do hope this now stays that way until we reach the end of my Jewel 5 mission, but at least with this workaround I was able to keep the mission alive without having to redo almost the entire VAL segment. So that's a relief. If you want to see this mission continue, make sure you are subscribed to this channel so you don't miss when I go live again. And also a big thank you to my supporters over on Patreon and my YouTube members. It really means a lot to me that you stick around and keep the lights on around here. Let's just hope we don't have to do this safe game editing file to finalize our journey. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.